For sure. Um, so my name is Ben Eisenberg. I'm the incoming CIO at Bear Strategies, um, ticker Green Lane GNLN. Look, I started my career in traditional finance. I was an investment banker in Toronto. I was actually around for the first iteration of Crypto Meets TradFi, which happened in the Canadian public markets. Um, you know, the, the first companies to go public in the crypto space were Galaxy Digital, uh, which happened in Canada, WonderFi, which was a series of centralized exchanges in Canada that were rolled up. Um, so I was working on transactions like that in Canada. And through that, I had an opportunity to jump into crypto, but on the institutional trading side. Um, so I, you know, through my work in banking, I had an opportunity to join one of the first regulated digital assets trading desks in Germany called Bankhaus Scheich. And I worked on a variety of, of different mandates there, uh, including payment for order flow market making, OTC trading with institutions, governments. Um, but, you know, at the time, there was a lot of low hanging fruit in crypto. This was the time where, you know, crypto was priced differently on different exchanges. There were yield arbitrage opportunities in DeFi. So I left Bankhaus Scheich on good terms to start my own crypto native trading business called BSQD. Um, BSQD started as just a prop trading arbitrage business, but has since scaled up into a high touch trading desk for token issuers. And then fast forward a few years, as early this year, as the digital asset treasury started to come back into fashion, I thought it was an incredible opportunity to put together my combination of skill sets and bring one to market. And given that, you know, I, through my business, have a relationship with a variety of token issuers, I was able to really think long and hard about what a DAT means, why they should exist, and which token should create one. Um, as I went through my list of token issuers that I work with and other ones I'm connected with, I thought the, the, the best one, you know, always front and center of this exercise was Barachain. And, and the reason is because if you think about what a digital asset treasury is supposed to be, it's supposed to be a way for traditional capital to access non-traditional investments. I mean, if you think about, if you think about, uh, what MicroStrategy was in the early days. It was a way before the ETFs for traditional capital to access Bitcoin, a new differentiated up and coming investment, and uh, sorry, a new up and coming, a new differentiated up and coming asset class. Um, now, fast forward, there's a ton of ways for institutions to access Bitcoin. There are ETFs, there are half a dozen DATs, maybe more. Um, and when I was thinking about what we should create in a digital asset treasury, it should be something that is first and foremost foundation backed, uniquely differentiated. And I also thought a very important piece of this was yield. All of these treasury strategies, their business model is to sell equity the NAV premium, um, use the proceeds to buy more of the token and generate NAV per share for shareholders like that. And of course, this is exciting in a bull market, but the bear market strategy I thought was non-existent. So I thought bear chain was a great opportunity to create a digital asset treasury for these two reasons. First, it's a uniquely differentiated blockchain. It's the first blockchain with a mechanism for the network to invest in the businesses on top of it and take back a piece of those businesses revenue. Um, it's cheap. It's trading at just over a billion dollars fully diluted value. So there is massive upside potential in the underlying token. And then finally, uh, through staking on bear chain, because you get a yield that comes from the real revenue of the real businesses on the blockchain, um, there's a mechanism for the DAT to, to generate revenue, even in bear markets where maybe it's not trading at a huge premium to NAV. So I thought these three things uh, in, in combination made bear chain a unique front runner for a digital asset treasury. And given my relationship with the bear chain foundation and my background of skills in, in capital markets, institutional crypto trading and DeFi native crypto trading, I thought I was the guy to uh, put it all together. Yeah, um, so so historically, you know, all blockchains create some amount of emissions or block rewards, which are essentially new tokens created out of thin air to pay validators or miners to rubber stamp which transactions didn't happen, which transactions happened, and who has how many assets where. Um, never before in blockchain history has there been a mechanism for the network to actually invest in the businesses on top of on top of it and to take back directly a piece of those businesses success. Barachain and through proof of liquidity is the first blockchain with such mechanism. And as a result, what what Barachain allows allows the network to do is it allows the network to incubate and invest in the best businesses on top of it and take back a piece of those businesses success. Absolutely. So if you think of blockchain as just a ledger, um, which is really what it was in the early days, Bitcoin, you know, was the first 
network that was decentralized on which you could hold value and send it to other people in a completely censorship resistant and transparent way. Um, then you have Ethereum. Ethereum is a layer of logic on top of that network. So now instead of just being able to hold value and send it to other people, you can build applications and send value through those applications. And those applications are completely censorship resistant, completely sense transparent and, and trustless. Um, and, and you know, what's, what all historic blockchains have in common is that in order to, to build a decentralized network effect, you need to have some mechanism to incentivize people to come and participate in the network. So in the case of Bitcoin, every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network creates three and a half Bitcoin that it sends to miners that successfully validate a block. Um, Ethereum has a similar, a similar mechanism, but instead of sending it to miners, it sends it to stakers, which are you know, validators that are essentially acting as notaries, rubber stamping who has how many assets where, which transactions happen and which transactions didn't happen. But what's never existed in blockchain is a mechanism for the network itself to invest in the businesses on top of it. So Ethereum was an incredible innovation because now you can build trustless, transparent, censorship resistant, decentralized finance and other applications. Um, but there was no mechanism for the network that those applications are sitting on top of to really accelerate their growth. And furthermore, there was no mechanism for the participants in the network, the validators and, and the token holders to participate, participate in the upside of that, of that revenue growth of those businesses. So the innovation behind proof of liquidity is instead of just sending the block rewards to validators that are essentially very highly paid notaries, rubber stamping whose assets are where, which transactions happened or didn't happen, proof of liquidity allows the validators to direct the network's emissions towards the best businesses on top of the network. It allows the, the validators to essentially invest in the, their favorite businesses on the network and take back a revenue share in those businesses. You can think of it kind of like customer acquisition financing, um, but on blockchain and built into the native layer of the network. And now not only can the network support businesses by directing the networks, uh, the, the block rewards of the network to those businesses and, and the businesses now having uh, better access to capital, but the network furthermore can take back a piece of those businesses through the revenue share that it gets in exchange for the investment. So as a token holder, if you stake Vera, you earn a staking yield that's derived from the real revenue of the real businesses on top of the chain. And it's the first time ever in blockchain history that a mechanism like that exists at the core layer of the blockchain. Yeah, I mean, it's very simple. If you're an application on another EVM compatible chain, or you're thinking about building an EVM application, you can come onto Barachain. Um, if, you, if you've already built the application, you can very easily copy and paste it onto Barachain. And now you get to access kind of the, what, what we're trying to build out as the growth blockchain in the EVM world. So now through proof of liquidity, once your application is on Barachain, you can easily access investment from the network um, in exchange for a piece of either, your, either for your tokens or a piece of your future revenue, whatever it may be. So what value does Barachain bring to you as an application? Well, you come onto Barachain, you opt into proof of liquidity, and now you can access growth capital, which you can use either to acquire new customers, fund development costs, spend on marketing, whatever it may be. Yeah, I mean, this is a really exciting transaction because now for the first time ever, traditional capital can access Barachain. So this is a big deal. Previously, Barachain was a very well-known coin amongst crypto natives. Um, you know, it's you can't go to a crypto event without hearing about Barachain. It's listed on every exchange. It's trading, you know, 50 to $200 million a day in volume on the major exchanges. Uh, it's very well distributed amongst crypto natives, but previously there was no way for traditional capital to access it. And if they could access it, they still could not fully access the, the benefits of proof of liquidity through staking. So what we've done here with the digital asset treasury is we put together a vehicle through which now traditional capital can access bear chain. Um, we did this with a landmark transaction of $110 million, uh, which included $50 million of cash and $60 million of tokens. The transaction was led by Polychain Capital, which is, if you are familiar with crypto, one of the most legendary investors in the space and had participation from a, a bunch of other notable investors, including blockchain.com, Kraken, Dow5, and the Barachain Foundation. So this is a fully Barachain Foundation supported equity vehicle for traditional capital to access the Barachain network. And what we're really creating here is a simplified equity that, you know, proof of liquidity is amazing. The yields you can get from proof of liquidity is, is also amazing. But if you're, if you're more of a traditional investor, it's difficult for you to, to access that. So what we're creating here with the, the 
digital asset treasury is a simplified and productized version of Bera chain and, and proof of liquidity. So now instead of buying Bera on the market, custodying it yourself, learning how proof of liquidity works, running a validator, staking it, you can just buy our equity and we'll do all of that for you. So it's both exciting for traditional capital that previously couldn't access Barachain, but also for crypto investors that love the Barachain story, but just don't want to be too involved on the staking front. Well, what's, you, you know, in the early days, the, the PTC DATs and the Ethereum DATs were really interesting because they were, the, like I said, the, the, it's difficult for traditional capital to access new age assets and digital asset treasuries were a vehicle for them to do that. So in the early days, I think Bitcoin and ETH treasuries were, were really exciting and interesting because they were a, a unique way for traditional capital tax. It's this non-traditional investment class. Um, but now, you know, over the, uh, over the past year or so, um, there are now ETFs for Bitcoin, ETFs for Ethereum. There are dozens of Bitcoin and Ethereum debts. Um, same with Solana. So there are many ways for traditional capital to access these things. And I think as a result, they'll, they'll, over time trade down to roughly their net asset value plus a small premium for the uh, ease of access to institutional capital. What's unique about the bear chain DAT is uh, two things. It's the first and only foundation backed vehicle for traditional capital to access bear chain. Um, unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum DATs where you have a plethora of other options, this is the only one. Um, so we think just by virtue of having a, a, monopo a monopoly over publicly traded and securitized bear chain, our equity should command a NAV premium. Furthermore, if you look at other DATs, the entire business model is built around selling equity at a NAV premium, buying more of the underlying token, rinse and repeat, which is incredible in a bull market, but in a bear market, it, you can't really rely on that. And just given my capital markets background, um, I was very well aware of that as we were structuring this transaction. And that, that was one of the main reasons I chose bear chain. Aside from it being a, a completely unique and, and new technology, Barachain pays a significant yield through staking. And so as a DAT, instead of just relying on our ability to sell equity at a NAV premium to generate uh, NAV per share and do accretive transactions for shareholders, we actually, we make revenue every 15 minutes just by collecting staking rewards. So we, you know, we have a significant yield that not only funds the cost of operating a public company, but furthermore should lead to, uh, should lead to significant profitability. So Barachain has some really unique and high profile investors in the blockchain that have helped the network secure exciting partnerships that are yet to be released on the real estate tokenization front. I can't go into too much detail because they're not press released yet, but at a very high level, there are parts of the world with very exciting real estate investment opportunities from a cap rates perspective that haven't yet allowed foreign investment. The Barachain Foundation has managed to work on a partnership with one such jurisdiction to tokenize the real estate and allow international investors to access this opportunity. As I mentioned, it's not yet press released um, and there's still some details to be finalized, but you can all expect to hear some exciting news on that front in the, in the months to come. You know, I, I think here's a good opportunity to highlight how proof of liquidity works and helps to grow businesses. Dolomite is a borrowing and lending market that has been around for a couple of years, managed to attract around $50 million in TVL before coming on Bear Chain. It's an EV, it, you know, it's an EVM compatible app. So they were very easy. It was very easy for them to copy and paste it onto Bear Chain. Once they did that, they were able to opt into proof of liquidity uh, and, and attract investment, which they could use for customer acquisition financing. Um, so within a few weeks of coming onto Bear Chain and, and opting into proof of liquidity, Dolomite was able to scale their TVL from $50 million to over $200 million. And this wasn't a short-lived phenomenon. Since then, it's been trending steady and up and to the right. Um, so Dolomite is one very exciting ecosystem project that's managed to use proof of liquidity to fund customer acquisition cross, cost, grow their total value locked, and as a result, grow their revenue. Um, that's just one example. Uh, in recent weeks, the bear chain team launched Bend, which is the native bear chain lending, borrowing and lending market. Um, and we have some up, exciting upcoming projects that are about to go live. Uh, Athena is one of them. So we're working on an Athena bear chain application deployment um, and, and many more. For sure. I mean, I don't think there's any clearer incentive alignment between the network and applications and blockchain period. 
what proof of liquidity allows is instead of validators just being paid for notarizing transactions, um, the proof of liquidity in bear chain aligns incentives between validators and applications by allowing the validators to invest in the applications and, and benefit not just from notarizing transactions, but benefit from the application success as a result of that investment. Um, so the first time ever in blockchain, you have a mechanism for the network to invest in the businesses and for the network to take back a piece of those businesses' success. So instead of the network just benefiting from transactions occurring, the network is benefiting from the growth of the ecosystem and the growth of the network. So from the beginning, the Barachain team has taken institutional trust, regulatory compliance very seriously. Uh, you know, in order to attract some of the investors that the Barachain Foundation did, uh, investors like Polychain and Framework on, on the crypto side, investors like Golden Tree, Laser Digital, and Brevin Howard on the traditional side, Barachain had to, you know, obtain legal opinions in multiple jurisdictions. Um, the token was launched from the BVI. There were great lengths the foundation went to to make sure that everything was regulatory compliant on the token side. But, you know, and that's enough for some institutional investors that are on the edge and willing to dip their toes into the real crypto native world. But it's not enough for traditional investors that don't have crypto in their mandate. Um, so, you know, registered investment advisors in the U.S. that that maybe can't own crypto that like the bear chain story and like all of the measures that we've taken on the on the token side in terms of regulatory and compliance, still are unable to buy the token because it's not inside their investing mandate. So what we've done on that front is we actually created a, a digital asset treasury that's listed on the NASDAQ. So now even institutions that can't own crypto can get exposure to bear chain by buying the equity. So now we believe that we've created a robust regulatory and compliance framework that allows both institutional crypto investors and traditional institutions that can't own crypto to invest in Barachain. Well, Barachain has, has been a consistent participant and sponsor of events at Korean Blockchain Week, um, so it intends to keep doing that. Um, we recently hired a head of investor relations that's sitting in Singapore. Um, we have an APAC lead that's sitting in Korea. So the Barachain team, um, you know, is always going to show up and throw events in, in, at, at Korean Blockchain Week, Token 2049 in Singapore. Um, we have boots on the ground in, in both of those places. And we continue to explore partnerships on the uh, commercial, commercial and, and consumer adoption side in those regions. So I think the, the key major things that you can expect to see Barrett Strategies do uh, in the short term, our first, we're going to step into the market and buy a meaningful stake in the Barachain network. Um, we already have over 54 million Barra on our balance sheet, making us the, one of the largest holders of Barachain, if not the largest. Um, but we plan to take that a step further by taking the, uh, by taking the cash that we raised in this round and using it to buy Barra on the open market to not just hold on our balance sheet, but to stake so that we can earn a yield um, and generate revenue for shareholders. So those are the you know, major things you can expect to us to see in the short term. Um, and then in the long term, uh, you know, we intend to, to generate a return for shareholders by doing a series of intelligent capital markets transactions that include issuing equity at a NAV premium, potentially buying back shares at a discount to NAV, all things that will create you know, accretion in terms of NAV per share to the shareholders of Bear Strategies.